This is a great photo of the new Endurance interior. Check it out how cool it is. This is MXUX. I'm just going to move forward here. I'm going to try to do this quickly. Uh, this is the Ride uh, 2023 Endurance consumer model. I've gone through a lot of information. I think this is what uh, Lordstown is spending $90 million a quarter on. So I've gone through some uh, a lot of information. I've got the, to the best of my ability at this present time what I think the exact options and specs of this uh, endurance uh, consumer endurance truck will be and i am convinced that after they do 500 fleet models they're going to go right into consumer or very much more quickly than they're letting on anyway there's a great headlight that's a great look of the endurance there now the endurance the 2023 endurance is a consumer uh, vehicle uh, the endurance is categorized by lmc as a light duty truck now a lot of people are talking about, oh, you know, the uh, uh, capacity and so forth. Uh, you know, one one definition is 21 miles per gallon. We're looking at at least 65, probably more with the endurance. The U.S. government uh, definition of a light duty truck. So let's operationally define what the endurance is. Light duty means any a motor vehicle rated at 85 pounds gross vehicle weight. And that's curb weight, I believe, or less. So we got max is 8,500 pounds. We meet that. Uh, vehicle curb weight of 6,000 pounds or less. Okay, and I believe we meet that. And has a basic frontal area of 45 square feet or less. Okay. So let's just say that we meet most of these requirements roughly. We don't have finals on this, but uh, let's just go with that because they have called it a light duty truck. Okay, light duty truck. And this is a government definition designed primarily for the pur purpose of transportation of property or as a derivation of such a vehicle or. Uh, designed primarily for the transportation of persons and have has a capacity of more than 12 persons or uh, available with special features enabling off-street or off-highway operation and use. So basically what I'm saying here is the Endurance is a light-duty truck. It's not a one-ton. It's not a super-duty. It's not a, you know, 250. Uh, it's it's a you know it's a half ton pickup truck okay all right uh, now I'm gonna go through this I got this in a checklist so I'm gonna try to keep with the checklist here go down the checklist as quickly as possible right now the battery we got 109 kilowatt lithium ion liquid cooled battery uh, range 200 miles not final not final okay. This is from internal testing. There's no EPA uh, reading on this range. Curious. Frunk, 9.6 cubic feet. We've gone over this. It's it's half of what the previous was. There's a 400 watt outlet in the pump, in the trunk, uh, frunk, and it's lighted. The bed is a five foot eight inch bed. I believe it was five foot six inch before. Uh, and there is a bed off option for this truck, which is important because uh the silverado and the cyber truck is not going are not going to have a bed they're incapable of having a bed off bed off means you can take the pickup truck bed off and put a flat bed on it or a special purpose bed um the bed has a 400 watt outlet it's got a light it's got tie down hooks it's got tailgate locks and i believe these are locks that are in place so that someone cannot open the tailgate and remove it from the truck okay i th i do believe that is the purpose of these tailgate locks there's also a camera in the bed so you've got an outlet a light tie down hooks locks and a bed camera now you know the ford f-150 has a big conglomerate of the, the lightning of outlets I just want to tell you, from having used a pickup truck in actual work situations, 
that outlet, that electrical center with that little plastic flap on it is going to last 10 minutes. Okay. That is not suitable for work, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see what the final looks like on that, but that's going to be, in my opinion, going to have to be much more heavy duty for the kind of use I was using, putting wash gravel in a pickup truck, these types of things, shoveling loads out of a truck. You know, uh, I don't, I don't see it working. Okay, in my opinion, that's a grocery getter. I think that the uh, endurance outlet is much more feasible for a work truck. Moving forward, spare tire. Okay, spare tire, full-size spare tire. It's mounted under the bed, and it includes a toolkit. So this is a big deal because, you know, you get a full-size you, you get a full size spare, okay? And uh, it's not mounted in some cubby hole like the Rivian. By the way, Rivian also, Rivian's an SUV. I'm not even going to talk about it, okay? Now, the towing capability of the Endurance consumer model is going to be four tons, okay? I do believe the towing package, from what I've seen, isn't an option. It's standard, at least so far. Uh, so that's going to include a hitch, enhanced cooling, probably some uh, suspension enhancements as well. Now, this is the thing about the Endurance. Of all these electric trucks, it's the only one with a solid rear axle. According to Sandy Monroe, this is the only way to tow. Everything else is a compromise, okay? This also has leaf springs in the back. So we have a very rigid rear suspension, which is ideal for towing. And I might add, and we're going to get into the uh, capacity, the you know, the weight capacity of this thing. When you have a solid rear axle, okay? and you have leaf springs in the back, guess what? If you have to overload that truck a little bit, you can do it. It'll, it'll handle it, in my opinion. Now, this is, this is a new vehicle. It has hub motors. The bearing wheel bearings are important. I'm sure they've spec these wheel bearings out to the nth degree. But I'm just saying, you're not going to be able to overload, uh, uh, overload that lightning because of the fragile rear suspension and i don't care what anybody says that's why they put that scale in there and if you overload that truck you're going to avoid the warning but anyway that is the towing i, I think this is a very capable towing vehicle for consumers and it makes you worry less about the capacity uh, requirements because you know you can tow a trailer if you have to you have four tons that's more than the ford lightning f100 more than enough for a boat and so forth, or dirt bike trailer, so on and so forth, uh, Airstream trailer, whatever it may be. Uh, in my opinion, a very good towing package. Like I said, uh, they've got all kind of gimmicks on the Lightning, enhanced towing mode and all this. Listen, solid rear axle, leaf springs, that's a towing vehicle, okay? That's a truck. That's a real truck. Okay, not an SUV. Moving forward. Now, we got the payload. It's 1,200 pounds. Now, this has gone down again from uh, 1,800 pounds because, obviously, more weight has been added to the truck. I think that might be for the standard towing package, as the towing package was listed as an option in the past. The hitch is about 100 pounds. Then you have uh, extra cooling apparatus and more cooling fluid. But in any case, as I mentioned, we have this large towing capacity, uh, so a trailer can be used if necessary to exceed this. Also, I do believe there's wiggle room with a solid rear axle and leaf strings. Now, let's just go through this drivetrain. And I want to start this by saying this is, in my opinion, and you can look at my last video comparing it to the top of the line Porsche. This is the most capable battery electric four-wheel drive that there is. These are motors at the wheels. All the corrections are made at the wheels. There's no linkage. This is instantaneous digital control uh, for off-roading. I don't think it's going to be able to be beat for snow. It's and ice. There's 
you know, you can look at the last video on the snow and ice testing. And uh, in, a, in a California climate, like Southern California, when it rains, everybody makes fun of Californians for um, panicking about rain. What happens is it's dry most of the year. Oil drips and transmission fluid drips on the roads for 10 months, and then it rains, and all that stuff floats on top of the rain. And it is very much like black ice, and you'll be going down the highway, and you'll hit a patch of it, or you'll come to a stop sign, and you'll hit a patch of it. This four-wheel drive system is going to be able to handle that remarkably well, as well, collision avoidance. Uh, we haven't seen any moose test uh, uh, video on this, but I am sure that this is going to pass the moose test without a problem. And it's going to be able to handle if you have to make high-speed maneuvers when you're traveling on the highway or if you're traveling on a, a, a winding country road or driving through one of the canyons out here. This is the truck you're going to want to have with this drive system. Well, let me just go forward here. Now, this is a true four-wheel drive, okay? This is four hub motors. Now, you know, uh, Ford says, well, they got four. Well, they got two motors, okay? And they got a bunch of connecting shafts, and they got all kind of stuff going on. This is true four-wheel drive with a motor at each wheel. That's 4,800 pounds of torque, which is high as I understand it, as better electric vehicles are. They have 550 horsepower, not final. Quick clip, the F-150 getting dragged by an endurance. Again, I think they're doing testing. I don't know if they're sandbagging for the SEC, but previously it was 600 horsepower. So we have a not final on the battery and the range. and we, uh, in the Yeah, battery and the range and a not final in the horsepower. Now, here's the other thing of this drivetrain. It's got 30% greater regen than a normal battery electric vehicle because the wheels are adjusted every millisecond and they're either providing power or providing regen. Okay, that's how the torque vectoring, that's how the four-wheel drive works. Okay, uh, so the regen is 30% is, is higher, so you can expect better performance in stop-and-go driving. Okay. Uh, and this should, I think this is going to enhance the range. We'll see what the EPA range is. Okay, this is digital millisecond adjustments at the wheel. you got to understand, these other uh, companies, and even Porsche, you know, they've got connecting CV joints and drive shafts and reduction gears. And uh, in the case of the uh, F-150 Lightning, and likely the Porsche as well, they got an electronic differential, and they got all these moving parts. And, you know... Uh, the computer sends a signal uh, to that system, and it's got to go first. It's got to go through the gearing, then it's got to go through the connecting, and then it's got to go through the drive shaft, then it's got to do the CV joint, and then finally it gets to the wheel, and the, and, and the drive shaft has to direct energy to the wheel. You can say, well, that's, that's going to happen quickly. Well, you know, when you're in an accident, and every mil and you're you're avoiding an accident, and every millisecond counts. There's there's nothing that's going to react quicker uh, than this endurance consumer model, okay? Uh, and I think that's important, and I think that's an important safety feature that shouldn't be overlooked in this car. Uh, it's got digital traction control. This thing uh, you can see the videos. I mean. It's fantastic. Torque vectoring is also digital. And this really is a better system than the Porsche, I believe, because of the wheels, motors, and the millisecond reaction time. And this is using the wheels, basically, to steer the, steer the vehicle, okay, to maneuver the vehicle. And you can see my last video on that. I'll see if I can put a uh link to that in here uh digital electronic stability control now this is a this is a standard feature with many cars it was established really in in response to the to the moose test which was taken in in the 80s which greatly enhanced the safety of vehicles in this case again 
at the wheel electronic uh, execution, it's going to be better. So this is going to be a really safe vehicle when it comes to collision avoidance and also performance on road and off road. But this is uh, this is going to be a nimble vehicle and ABS, which we've We've all come to, uh, you know, the automatic braking system that stutter steps the brakes. We've all come accustomed to that. There are literally four moving parts in the drivetrain. People have argued about this. Uh, it's the wheel motors. There's no drive shafts. There's no CV joints. There's no connecting rods. There's no reduction gearing. There's no... That's it. Okay? Anybody wants to argue about that, they can. There's all kind of advantages to that. And the number one is you're not using the battery energy to move a lot of parts that are that that, that are just transferring energy. This is is putting the battery energy directly to the wheels, directly to the ground. Most efficient there is. This is another one. The hub motor can be removed in five minutes. You can change a motor in five minutes with basic hand tools okay need i say anything more upgrade the motors take the motors off fix the motor replace the motor this try and do try and replace the motor on a ford f-150 lightning you have to take half the truck apart okay if there happens to be a problem or a recall or you know, the thing about the consumer version of the F-150 Lightning is the battery pack is upgradable, can be removed and replaced. So you can upgrade the battery pack and the hub motors can be removed and replaced. So you can hot rod this thing up if you want. OK, 20 inch aluminum wheels, disc brakes on all wheels. We all expect that there's a 47 foot turning radius. And this is, again, very nimble. And rack and pinion steering with electronic power assist for parking. I hope this is, I, I do believe this is variable electronic uh, power steering assist. I am a big fan of rack and pinion, straight on rack and pinion, no power assist myself. But nonetheless, that's a great, uh, a great feel uh, for the road. It gives you some feedback. Uh, I think, uh, you know, versus, uh, you know, whatever, uh, an electric uh, uh, steering mechanism, you know, Tesla has a belt and motor on there, so forth. All right, Let's keep this snappy. Uh, the ride, now this is, again, the endurance consumer version versus the fleet version, okay? This is the Lordstown Motors endurance fleet version. I mean, I'm sorry, consumer version, okay? Now let's get into the body. And again, they've been spending 90 million a quarter. What have they been doing? They've been adding a lot of features to this truck. Body features. Okay, we got a step bumper. Got that. Puddle lighting. And, you know, this would be lights, uh, you know, under the, either under the door frame or under the rear view mirror that uh, puts light down where you're going to step. Very nice feature. Uh, white paint is standard. I understand white paint is a high-priced option in some uh, vehicles. Uh, we got power rearview mirrors, so your uh, elephant ears sticking out the sides are power. Uh, there are, you know, there's a whole bunch of lighting up front, running lights. Uh, and there's a front <clears throat> center charge port, okay? Uh, in the uh, uh, cabin, okay? Now, anyway, th so these are, th you know, step bumper, puddle lighting, white paint, power mirrors, running lights. Uh, oh, front center charge point. I'm sorry, that is for the battery. So I think this is superior to being on the left or right side. Right front center, all you got to do is pull up to the charger, plug it in. I think this is the way to go versus on the left or right side, which the F-150 Lightning uses. Much easier to uh, connect the charging cable. Now, let's just go to the interior uh, features. And I think this is, there's there's more with the exterior, but let's just 
keep moving with this quickly. Interior features. Okay, over the air updates. Uh, Bluetooth. Wi Fi. Okay. MP3 player. Air conditioning. Quick photo of the prototype interior of the Endurance. Cruise control. Keyless entry. Keyless start. There's a backup camera. So there's a bed camera. There's also a backup camera. Uh, carpeting. Carpeted floor mats. There's a rear cab window defroster. And remote cab preconditioning. This is, you know... With these features here, and these features here, and there's more coming, this is a, f a fully optioned out uh, truck we're talking about here. This is not some vanilla truck. This is this is a, uh, and I'm going to show pictures of the the interior. What we think, uh, pretty much what we think the interior is going to be. But let's just move forward. So I, I just want everybody to know, everybody thinks fleet truck, well, you know, rubber floor mats and a on-off switch. No, this is, this this is, by the way, these are being developed and are part of the system right now. So these are, these are going to be available. This is not some, you know, concept thing, according to my research. Now, we've got carpeting. So there's there's also going to be carpeting. The fleet model is going to come with, you know, vinyl or rubber floor mats. This is going to have carpeting, and it's going to have carpeted floor mats too. So you're going to. Have this is a quick video of a beta interior on the Endurance. Uh, some good shots. This is from Fleet Forward. Just a quick video clip here to give you an idea of, I think, a great interior. I have some more video later. I have uh, cloth seats, carpeting, all these features. Uh, we're, we're speculating on a heat pump for heating, but air conditioning, certainly. This is a pretty, I mean, you know, this is a well-outfitted pickup truck. This is not going to leave you wanting for a lot of stuff, okay? Now, you may want an entertainment system, you know, I'm sure the entertainment system is going to be okay in it, but if you want to put an aftermarket subwoofer in there, that's fine. Uh, there's an MP3 player as part of it. There's Bluetooth. You know, you can run your tunes off your phone, your Spotify. Uh, I mean, this is a nice truck. All right, let's move forward. Uh, more... Uh, more features there's key fob activation okay so just like the rivian the rest of them tire pressure monitor okay got your tire pressure monitor that's a standard feature uh you got power brakes power disc brakes but i'm sure that the um uh regen braking is going to do a lot for braking uh stability control traction control we've we've talked about this uh, rear cross traffic alert. Okay. Cloth seats. I prefer cloth seats. I'm not a leather seat guy. I don't like the, the, the vegan leather. I'm not a fan of it. I find cloth seats to be the most comfortable. I don't know. And I think these are very nice cloth seats. We're going to see a picture later. Uh, in the back seat. In the, in the center console, at the back of the center console, so the front seat's going to have, I'm sure, uh, outlets and things, but the back seat is going to have a USB-C, USB, it's going to have a 110 outlet, it's going to have a 440 outlet. Um, anyway, uh, we're also going to have a center storage compartment console, and of course, we got to have cup holders. So... Take a look at all this stuff. This, this is, you know, this is a great drivetrain. The body features, and I think the truck is attractive. It's one of the lowest, <coughs> certainly lowest electric trucks. I think it has a great stance. I, I like the body look, especially in black. I mean, it looks fantastic. 
all these interior features, which you come to expect in all your cars, right? There's nothing missing here. Nothing I can see that's missing. Um, here again, everything you expect to see, uh, even the cup holders. Okay, so this is not a vanilla, no option pickup truck, which, by the way, you know, the Ford Pro certainly is, but they're only, they aren't even going to make any Ford Pros. Forget about buying a Ford Pro. Anyway, here's the warranty. Uh, the drivetrain <clears throat> is eight years, 100,000 miles. So certainly, if you're going to have a problem, it's going to be in eight years or 100,000 miles. They got roadside service, three years, 36,000 miles. Okay? Again. Corrosion, they got a five-year uh, unlimited mileage uh, warranty on corrosion. And people living in snowy climates, you understand what this is all about with the road salts and everything. And just overall basic, we got a three-year, 36,000-mile uh, warranty. Now, these are all great, the roadside, uh, the corrosion, and the basic. This is, this is the one here. This is the drivetrain and the battery. You got eight years. So anyone having any questions about, you know, are, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You got eight years. Okay. And these motors have been tested extensively. I, I'm pretty, I'm confident that they're going to work out fine. Uh, but you've got eight years and a hundred thousand miles to, you know, basically <laughs> have something go wrong. And I think it's going to be a very reliable system. I think they're making sure of that. And I think Steve Burns, he is the one who developed this, uh, the control system for the four-wheel drive, and he was very diligent about that. So um, I think the drivetrain is going to be solid, and that was his Bollywood. So anyway, this is the thing. Now, the price for all this, and I have, I have double-checked this, and this is as of today, okay? You get all this stuff, I think a very full-featured, a uh, very usable battery electric four-wheel drive battery electric vehicle, by the way, that can be lifted. You can put a snow plow on it. Uh, you can get a bed off function. You can put a flat bed on it or whatever kind of bed you want to put on it. Um, 54K after the federal re rebate. And this, this is competitive with the uh, Ford Lightning XLT features the whole deal, and you got to understand, Ford isn't even making vehicles right now. Hopefully, Foxconn is going to solve that problem for Lordstown, and you know they are hiking up the destination fees for all of these uh, Ford vehicles. They're adding like two thousand dollars a vehicle now. Uh, so you can add that on top of what your options and option dot vehicle is. And also, let's face it, you know, there's going to be dealer markups. You know, how much? 10 grand, 20 grand? You know, that's what they're doing with the uh, with the other four, with the Bronco. Anyway, uh, Lordstown has a direct sales model. Now, I'm going to have to worry about it. There aren't going to be dealer markups. It's going to be like Tesla, okay? This is a great price. This is a solid price. This is the price I believe the car is going to sell at. I I think this is just a great deal, great warranty. Um, I am uh, shocked at, uh, you know, and again, they've been spending $90 million a quarter or whatever on this, and they're, and they're doing the tooling on this and everything, but you can see all of the functionality that has been added to this truck uh from the from the beginning it's 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 really and i believe hightower has had a lot to do with this because um you know he's managed a lot of vehicle programs and he really i believe is consumer focused and i think well obviously he knows what he's doing okay this is my opinion um so the production, 
In 2022, we have 500 units being made. Are these going to be all fleet? I think so. I think they're going to send out the Nina Pinta and the Santa Maria. They're going to send out the fleet units. They're going to send out 500 units. They're going to get the feedback on them. And it's my opinion that they're going to launch. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're saying no. But they're set up to launch a consumer version. Are they going to launch a consumer version of 54K in 2023? My opinion is the consumer version is going to be coming very soon. And um, the fleet version with optioned out like this, there, there's uh, no reason to think that uh, they won't sell this. The, the fleet ver I mean, you know, this is the endurance, fleet or consumer. If they decide to sell direct to consumer, all they got to do to change it from a fleet vehicle to this vehicle is to take the governor off. They have a governor on uh, the fleet model that limits the speed to 80 miles an hour. That's for insurance purposes with fleets. Uh, this truck has been run on the track. I have inside information. It has been run on a road race track at 130 miles an hour. Okay, all they have to do is take the governor off, the 80, 80 mile an hour governor, and boom, it's a consumer vehicle. That's all they have to change, and that's an electronic change. So can they change it from a fleet vehicle to a consumer vehicle? Yes, they can. Do they have the options and everything to fit out a consumer vehicle? Yes, they can. Now, this is just a... Uh, uh, I'm not even sure that this is a photo. This might be a conceptual thing. Uh, I have some photos coming up I'm going to put in the next section of this video. But this gives you an idea of what the view out the cab is. I think it's a great truck. I I think I love the interior. It's kind of a throwback interior. It's not overdone. It's not all bedazzled like the Ford uh, interior. I like the screen layout. I like the way um, the whole thing looks. And um, personally, I'm a fan. Now, I just want to make some, take some a minute here on some macro notes. And, you know, this is uh, April 1, April Fool's Day, 2022. So I'm just going to go over this. We all know what's going on in the world. Now, I just want to go over a couple of things. Russia has just demanded energy payments in rubles, okay? <clears throat> Europe gets most, a lot of its energy, almost all of its natural gas from Russia. This is a problem, Okay. Uh, they're trying to, you know, the international oil payment system is in dollars. Uh, barrels of oil are uh, nominated or valued in dollars. This is a major problem in the world, okay? Saudi Arabia and Russia and other countries have formed, you know, they're in OPEC too. So there is a cartel. Um, we... As a country, I mean, Europe is in worse shape than us because I, I believe we've limited, uh, we can be so, but the point is, this is all a threat uh, to the U.S. economy. And I do believe the barrels of oil can go to $200, $200 a barrel. They haven't yet, but we don't know what's going to happen uh, in Europe. Uh I think this is a very precarious situation the country's in. Now, the President Biden has evoked the Defense Production Act for battery materials for battery electric vehicles. They're they're seeing the writing on the wall. Okay? Two hundred dollar a barrel oil means fuel is gonna cost twice as much as it costs right now, which is like six bucks an hour. I paid six, so that's twelve dollars a gallon. Okay, we have to have battery electric vehicles in the United States. There's no more guessing about this. Uh, the future's too unpredictable. We can't base our economy and our country on these oil prices. In my opinion, the USA needs to have hub motor technology. Okay? And Lordstown Motors is the only one that is developing this. 
And I think this is critical for battery electric vehicles. And Alafe, the manufacturer, is in Slovenia. Are they at risk? I don't know. But we need to have this technology, and we need to be manufacturing this technology and do iterative improvements with this technology, uh, which you only get through manufacturing. And it needs to be in the United States. I... Uh, the reason is this this hub motor technology is the only thing that that that'll that'll give you a solid rear axle truck a battery electric vehicle now they can make bigger hub motors they can make gigantic hub motors okay and you can have big dump trucks and big uh, vehicles and big box trucks and so forth. Uh, Schmidt, the former president of Lord Sound Motors, was focusing on developing more powerful, bigger, more powerful hub motors. These motors will enable these big trucks, these inboard motors, and these SUV suspensions are not going to work. The only thing that works in this configuration with the leaf springs and the solid rear axle is uh, the hub motor. I think it's critical for our country to have this technology. And also, we have to have domestic uh, manufacturing of battery electric vehicles. Okay? Um, this is critical. Uh, if you saw my last video, Connecting the Dots is doing a thing on how General Motors plan to outsource all of their manufacturing of battery electric vehicles to China. And, you know, there's nothing that's going to stop them from doing that in the future. Lordstown Motors and Foxconn together are a domestic manufacturer of these vehicles. It's very important for our economy to have this here and to expand this. So I think that... Uh, in my opinion, with the macro events that are going on, I think it's even more, I think it's very critical uh, that Lordstown Motors uh, survives uh, if, uh, and gets to production on these vehicles and, get, and, and gets to innovating this technology. So that's my opinion. Anyway, just to sum everything up, this is a great truck at 54K. It is not stripped down. Uh, it's got everything you want. It's got the performance, on-road, off-road, snow, ice, fast, low, light, four tons, four tons of towing. You could tow Airstream, trailer, your boat, whatever. So it's a great truck. Uh, um, I think people are overlooking this. I know when you think of a fleet truck, you think of like one of these UPS trucks or something with the riveted metal interior and the, you know, the, the seat that swings back and forth. That's not what this truck is at all. And, and this is current. This information is all current to the best of my ability to what I can gather. So I think, uh, I think this is a real sleeper. I think we've got a winner here and I'm looking forward to it going into production.